You know, if I'm spending a Saturday and I lose track of a couple hours or a whole day because I've written a scene or an outline or finished a play, you know, written some songs, there's such a satisfaction in that. And sometimes, like, I mean, you hope that other people will like it too. That's, that's always the hope. But sometimes it's even just enough for you to like it. So I grew up really conservative, um, evangelical. My family was a traveling gospel band and we all lived on a mobile home bus for about 10 years and traveled around and sang songs at churches all over America. And so I grew up watching my dad give sermons and just spending a lot of time in church and um, watching people kind of just put together words and make arguments and uh, tell stories. And I think that had a really big impact on me. As a kid, I felt super guilty because I knew that like worship was supposed to be this ecstatic thing and like, you know, in heaven we're supposed to worship and praise forever. And I was like, that sounds super boring. But then I would watch like Aladdin or The Lion King and it was just like rapture. And I was like, ah, oh, like this is exciting. Why is church not as exciting? And you know, feelings of guilt around that. You know, so everything that I would write would have some sort of theological component. It would be exploring some kind of like you know, theological idea. How does God relate to us? How do we relate to God? What does it mean to mess up? What does it mean to find redemption? I'm a little less interested in those ideas now. I just kind of came to understand stories as a way to explore moral territory that wasn't really super clear in our heads. So there's a lot of gray area, you know, and uh, storytelling and like uh, scripted narrative in particular became a way to just cover that ground. Another big part of my story is that I realized pretty early on that I was gay. Um, and so there was a lot of effort like in my teens and 20s trying to control that. This doesn't change the way that we see you. We never kick you out or turn away. So come into the light and stay. And I wasted probably about 15 years sort of really chasing down that and wrestling it. And um, I really concluded about three or four years ago that it was all bullshit. <laughs> and that was a real paradigm shifting thing for me. I was born into a culture war that had been going on for 20 years before I was born and I didn't know anything about it. You know, I was just, um, it was white, it was de facto. And uh, it came with all these ideas about, you know, what you did and what you didn't do. And I'm, as an adult, sort of stepping back and seeing that this is a socially architected thing, really rooted in racism that I think is like, I think the evangelical church in America is the most destructive force in the world right now. And so right now I'm really passionate about telling stories, sort of exposing that. As I talk about like my, you know, dislike for the evangelical church, I kind of separate my parents from that because I feel really fortunate in that they were and are really supportive. If I write something funny, I want them to laugh. If I write something about injustice that's unfair, I want them to get mad. Uh, the worst criticism that you can have for a movie or a piece of art is just to be like, eh, what'd you think? It was okay, you know? Like, I want to get a reaction. If I play a song uh, at an open mic or something about some kind of sad thing that I've gone through and somebody's like, oh, I felt that, like that just feels really good to know that like other people know what that feels like too. So many of us who struggle with depression or anger or whatever kind of miserable thing we're dealing with at the moment, we feel like we're alone in it. And um, I know I felt really seen by uh, movies um, and books that I've read and watched. And so I think for me, writing is always the hope that somebody else will will find some kind of connective point with stuff that I've made to. That's just the way. My name is Ben Boquist. I'm a playwright and a songwriter. The clouds are gray and dark. Nothing's very clear. And 
And every one of those nine billion people live in fear, but just down here, that's just the